Well, let's give it up for Jesus. Man, now that is what, that, that's something that Juanita said. That is what we live for in the church. We live to see God transform lives. We live to see people come to God broken and God does what God does best and he heals, saves, and delivers. So let's just give it up for Jesus one more time. Come on. Amen. How y'all doing tonight? Are you guys doing good? Yeah, doing awesome. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be here every Sunday and every Wednesday. I'm happy to call Hunger Gen Church. It's always an honor to speak to family. Um, before we get into the word at all, I'd like um, you guys to bow your heads and we're going to call upon God because no word is spoken like one that's given by God. God, we ask you, Lord, that we invite your presence in this place. God, we know you're already here. God, we know you've done a good thing so far. God, we thank you, God, for who, the, who you are. God, we thank you, God, that as the word is spoken tonight, God, that you will speak through me, God, and there will be hearts that are changed, God, hearts that come alive, that dreams that are going to begin to begin to be dreamed again, God. Failures and chains that we broken, and we give, give all glory to your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. So I'm going to be speaking on a topic called Christian on a Monday today. I received a bunch of texts from people who were like, "Hey, does she know it's Wednesday?" I know it's Wednesday, but the topic is Christian on a Monday. So how many of you guys believe that we literally go to the best church ever? Right? Come on, yeah. Yeah, and we've got the best pastors ever. I was raised here, and I come every Sunday, and I'm like, good Lord. We are so lucky and so blessed to be here every time our pastors, Vlad, Ilya, Martin, Vasily, get up and they speak. I feel like, especially the past couple of Sundays, they've just been getting more and more powerful. And I'm like, man, the glory of God falls. And when our worship team starts, we start at 6 a.m. And we come at 6 a.m. And we're excited. We know that God's about to do something. And the great thing about that is we get so we get so full of God every Sunday and every Wednesday. We see God move. We see God change. And how many of you guys leave on a Sunday or Wednesday and you just feel like you can conquer the world? Raise your hands if you got it, right? Right? Seriously. And so that, and I mean, for, of us, for us that have been raised in church, even us that know, we've heard every message, we've heard everything, every single Sunday and Wednesday, we hear the message and we, God just moves mightily and we're so full of God and that's an amazing feeling. That is an incredible feeling. But I heard a preacher say, the biggest mistakes churches sometimes make is they pump people full of God on Sunday, not preparing them for what's going to happen Monday. And I was, as I was listening to the message, I had a completely different message planned out. And I feel like God was speaking to me and he was saying, this is what I want you to speak about. I want you to prepare my people for the the everyday life, the Christian life on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Saturday, what happens in life. And so what I want to speak about is when motivation dies on Sunday night, can the habits you've created, can the life you've created sustain your walk with God every other day of the week? So with that, I believe that us as Christians, it's amazing to be Christian-filled and spirit-filled, but I think to be an example of God, we have to be people that are full of integrity, people that are full of vision, people that are full of purpose, and people that are just full of examples that reflect men and valor of God, men and valor, or men and women of valor. And so the thing is, so what happens on a Sunday? So I, I, this, is, this is what I'm going to say. So Sunday is not meant to be an energy drink. It's supposed to be gas and fuel. So what that's saying is every time we come to church, so you know when you, when you drink a Red Bull and you get that instant burst of energy and you're like for like, well, it works for like an hour for me, but for some people like four hours, you feel like you're like an energizer bunny and you're running around and you feel like you just got like 10 tasks done and you're super woman. But then after that comes your crash and then like the energy wears off and the sugar and the caffeine wears off and all of a sudden you hit rock bottom, right? So Sunday and church was never supposed to be an energy drink. It was supposed to be like, okay, if we're going to compare Red Bull, we're going to compare it to water. Water, it energizes your body. It fuels your body. It hydrates, but it's also good for you. It can sustain your body, right? So that's what church is supposed to be like. But the problem is, is we come into church and we get filled up with the Holy Spirit, and it's like gas in a vehicle. But the thing is, putting in gas in a vehicle is only good if two things are met. If it's, wor it's a working vehicle, and it has a destination to go. Or else it doesn't matter, because you're putting gas into a vehicle that if it's not working, it's not going anywhere. And if there's gas in the vehicle and it has nowhere to go, then it just sits around, right? So that's what I want to speak about is good people, good Christians, don't just happen on accident. 
When you meet somebody good and you like, you meet somebody and you're like, man, they're such a good person. Or you meet a couple and they have a great marriage. Or you meet a student and they're smart. Those things don't just happen. You are not born this amazing person. That takes work. That takes habit. That takes investment. And that's what I want to talk about. And now you're, think, you're probably thinking like, man, that's not very spiritual. But here's why it is. Is if you can't maintain the gospel, if you can't maintain the grace, you'll never be able to show the world who God really is. You're not going to be able to maintain a great job and progress because God is a God of, of progress. So if you can't progress in life, you can't reflect the character of Christ so we're going to talk about creating a character creating greatness within you so if you guys want to well we'll have it on the screen Proverbs 22 29 it says do you see a man who excels in his work he will stand before kings he will not stand before unknown men so I want to highlight a few things a man who excels in his work there's two things in that one he's working not just posting about it, hallelujah. Um, he's working, and not just working, he is excelling. I mean, he is like employee of the month every month, employee of the year. He's winning bonuses because he's excelling in his work. And because he's excelling in his work, he's, God says he's going to stand before kings. And that I think that speaks of a dream. We're saying he's, ex, he's working hard, he's excelling, he's got a dream to stand before kings. So I believe greatness is found in four different things. Greatness is found in habits, investment, hustle, and grace. And we're going to break that down. So habits, creating a person, I think the very basic thing. So when we talked about putting gas into a vehicle, I believe that first you have to make sure you have a good vehicle. And that's going to start with the foundation. And I believe habits are your foundation. What you do in and out and in and out. And the reason I, the background was living a, a Christian on a Monday. The reason I did that, and there's so many words in the background, is because I believe we live in a society right now, which I believe social media is such a great tool. And I believe that it's an amazing thing. But the thing is, the problem about social media sometimes is you can be anybody you want on there literally you can be whoever you want you can make up whatever you want and you can let people believe it as long as you post it people will like it people will share it the problem is your habits don't lie so it doesn't matter who you present to be your habits are habitual actions that you do all the time so if you do them over and over and over again you can fool somebody day one day two day three but eventually your habits come out and that becomes, so your habits create the foundation that you build on. So if we're going to be people of substance and we're going to be people that are worthy of God to pour into and we're not like a bucket that leaks out, we need to start covering the holes and those holes are bad habits. So if we're going to begin to create great habits and create a foundation saying, God, that's my character, God. Begin to prune me, God. Take out the bad habits. Take out the negativity, God. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me great habits so you, when you pour into me, I can sustain your word. I can sustain the things that you pour into me so I'm going to give you guys today we're going to give you some practical practical things I'm not trying to I'm not trying to blow your mind I'm trying to give you steps that you can go home especially as graduates and, and I think 20s are such an awkward age where you're trying to figure out yourself so I'm just trying to give you guys some basic principles that I have learned and I promise you none of these are like from like my own imagination I've learned all of this from my mentors from books from podcasts from credible sources promise you I'll get you the references so <laughs> Here are some practical steps. We're going to start with becoming excellent where you're at. I think that is one of the biggest things is learning to take responsibility for where you are. And it's the easiest thing that when things happen in life to say, when things go wrong with family, I was raised with bad parents. When things go wrong with relationship, it was his fault. When things go wrong with job, I have a bad boss. I think character starts with saying, it's my life, it's my responsibility. I don't care what you do. You, I can't control what you do to me, but I can control how it affects me. And when you begin to take the power away from other people, you begin to have the power to build your life. So you're going to start taking, and you're going to become excellent. You know what? I don't care if you don't like your job. If you, you can learn a thing from everywhere that you are. If you stop blaming and you step back and say, I don't care where I'm at, I'm going to learn. You can learn something. If you, if you don't like your job, well, learn how to 
Put up with difficult people. Hey, that's going to teach you something in life. Come on. If, you, if, you, if anything comes up, if you're in a bad relationship or you're in a relationship where the person is tough, learn how to persevere. Learn to overcome. If, you're in a, if you have a family issue, learn how to see common ground. There's so many different things that you can learn once you stop blaming people and take responsibility. Come on. So, and then our next practical step. Come on, yeah. Yeah. So our next practical step is time management, a habit that I believe you have to create. Time management, it makes you create, take ownership of your time. I think if you ask anybody, they'll tell you the older that you get, time just flies by. I, I feel like we just celebrated New Year's, and now we're halfway through the year. And then you, you begin to talk to, I remember I was talking to an older gentleman earlier this week, and he was telling me his story, and he was telling, he's probably the most interesting man I have ever met in my life. He's 67 years old. He's lived a surreal life. He fought in the Vietnam War. Or, yeah, I think it was the Vietnam War. If, if I'm wrong, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but it was in the Vietnam War. He was married to the same woman for 25 years. She passed away. They had a bucket list, and he is now taking over this bucket list, and I was like, you know, tell me about it. And he was like, he went skydiving and bungee jumping and doing all these things and visiting these states. And he was saying, he's like, when you get to a certain place, you wish you would have taken control of your time. You wish you've given it, given it purpose. And when you take ownership, you give every second, every minute saying, I am, I am worth giving my life purpose. And so I, I really want to challenge you. Learn to manage your time. Learn to give your time purpose. Begin to schedule your life. Don't just wake up and like, oh, you know, I go to work at nine. Well, what are you doing from the time you wake up to nine o'clock that's where greatness happens what are you doing what are you doing at work if you like if you're like I'm just a stalker at an inventory store great you know how much time that gives you to think what are you thinking about what are your what what consumes your mind time management will be something that if not if you don't create as a solid foundation you'll realize that you're just going to be chasing it your whole life you're going to be chasing it and it won't it will be something that continues to slip out of your fingers okay and then number three is going to be uh, positivity I don't believe you can grow in life and be negative because negative is poison. So I don't care how much you invest into your life. If you allow negativity in your mind, you are going to continue to kill everything that grows. It'll be like po you spring poison. Uh, you know, fruit comes up, oh, poison. And that's like, okay, so speaking from pre, uh, you know, personal experience, it's like you do good, you do good, you do good. And the negativity comes and you take negativity, you get a blessing, you get a ticket. You get something, something comes up. That's how positivity works you, and negativity works. If you do not take control of your mind and kill out negativity and speak positivity, you're going to continue to kill every blessing. That, that At that point, you might as well just have all bad habits because you're just going to kill them all, okay? And so <laughs> number four is going to be money management. And so this is something that I'm continuing to learn. And people, I believe in their 20s, I heard, um, I don't remember what preacher said it, but three the three um, disciplines you need in life are food, money, or sexual desire. If you can discipline those three, you can discipline anything in your life. And if you take discipline and control over those in your 20s, you're going to realize you're going to save yourself heartache in marriage. You're going to save yourself heartache down the line with children. You're going to save your heartache and you're going to save yourself time by just creating a habit of learning how to spend what you have and not spend what you do not have. How do you create savings? So then we're going to go on to patience. Patience we're going to go through this one pretty quickly. Everything in life is going to take time. And the great thing and the bad thing is nobody's on the same clock as you. So I want to encourage you guys, learn to wait upon the Lord. God's timing can be crazy. But if you endure a, a waiting spirit, a patient spirit, then you are going to be able to reap benefits that come in time. And then on the next one, dress well. I know that sounds like a funny habit. But I promise you in life, you'll notice as you grow up, appearance matters to professional world if you do not take care of yourself and you do not take yourself serious no one else will and I'm going to skip over that one because I don't want to spend too much time on it but I really want to encourage you guys as you guys are getting into the professional world as you guys are growing up as you guys and I'm speaking this for graduates learn to take your appearance seriously learn to present yourself and show people that I take myself seriously and I want to be taken serious it's a great habit that'll carry you very very far and teach people how to treat you and then spending time alone when you learn to spend time alone and you get to know yourself you begin to discover who you are and what you want to achieve and what you want to go after we're going to race through these how you respond to adversity fear negativity and op uh, opposition 
how you respond, and how you talk to yourself. Learning to respond with positivity. Learning to respond with power instead of negativity. When you wake up in the morning and those thoughts start running your, through your mind that I, can't, I don't want to be awake, do you allow your thoughts and your feelings to overrule you or can you speak to them and give them purpose and direction to go? And that right there, these habits... These habits will create the foundation of the car. They create the engine. They create what runs in your life. It literally will be the driving force of your vehicle. And that when, when you come to church and you, you hear things and you are able to pour in, you're actually able to have a car that's working that has a car that sustains. And some of us were saying, I know I've heard this before, when you ask people, what do you dream about? Like, what do you want to be? And people are like, oh, I don't know what I want to be. I'm not good at anything. Here's the amazing thing. Good habits worked on become our greatest qualities. When you work on your good habits, when you work on just being excellent where you're at, when you work on being, having great time or money management, when you work on, you all of a sudden see that companies start to notice that. The jobs start to notice that. Hey, you know what? They're actually really stable and reliable. You don't need to have some super talent. You just need to be a quality person that makes your life worth quality. Come on. Come on. And then number two, investment. So, a car has the engine, but it also has the body. Investment is the cosmetics of a car. To pour gas in, you need to have the engine, but you also need to have doors. You need to have investment. So to invest into yourself, once you've created the foundation, you've closed all the leaks, you've closed all the holes, now you begin to pour into yourself. When you have, once you have character to maintain, you begin to pour and you begin to invest in yourself. Investing, in, investing into yourself is the best investment you will ever make. It's choosing to invest into who you want to be I recently was writing and talking to God and I heard this quote and it said before you spend bef before you want to spend your life with anyone else you have to want to spend it with yourself that life with yourself is the longest relationship you'll ever keep why not make yourself a really good person if you're gonna spend your life with you from the moment you're born to the to the moment you die you'll have family and they'll come and go or they'll stay but you know life takes you different places you'll have friends they'll come and go you'll have a husband you'll have kids but the great thing is you go to sleep with yourself every night why not create and invest into that person why don't you make that person a quality person see invest don't wait to know what you want to do to start investing to who you want to be you don't need to know that you know i want to be a doctor so now i'm going to go study no study now become educated study and move forward you don't need to know exactly what you want to do to invest into who you want to be you should want to be greater no matter what you do and so practical ways to invest into yourself I'm going to go down the line books podcasts sermons blogs seminars conferences conversations and google don't shrink your world down to your own interests I hear this all the time where I'm talking to talk to people where they say I can't afford education I don't get um, you know financial aid education is not just found in schools Education is everywhere where you choose to learn. When you choose to learn, you'll find it everywhere you go. Come on. And I want to challenge you. So something, one of the greatest lessons I have ever learned was from my mentor, Pastor Ilya. He would tell, he would, well, it wasn't really to me. He would just tell people and he would always challenge people just to learn, just to be aware of their surroundings, to constantly be learning. He would tell me that, you know, I have, well, dozens of, of, uh, however many business plans just laying around when he'd hear a topic or he'd hear something he'd start to research it he'd start to create a portfolio he would and we we're like are you ever going to go after it and he's like oh no i'm just i'm just diversifying my mind you don't realize how the information that you learn can become useful and I, I want to challenge you guys that begin to pay attention in conversation. When you meet people, ask them questions, engage, be curious, want to know things. Because you're thinking, like, I'm interested in sports. What do I ever need to know about agriculture, farming, what? But you don't realize when you talk to somebody, you get to know them. You get to know a little bit, just a little bit about their topic. Now you're standing in an elevator with somebody. You ask them how, how they're doing. They tell you good. You ask them what they do. They farm. All of a sudden, two weeks ago, you had a conversation on farming. You can't talk much but you can talk a little bit you've made a connection common ground common ground is the most powerful tool you will ever have because common ground it creates trust it creates connection it creates a bond common ground will open doors that knowledge can never open or that college can never open because when somebody feels like you understand them that you can connect to them then somebody all of a sudden wants to do to help you all of a sudden you don't know that the person in the elevator that you just made a connection with that could be your next boss your next husband your next wife your next friend your next whoever but had you when somebody said oh I farm you're like oh cool very cool so what, what are you doing this week you skipped over information that could have God's like hey there was a door 
you didn't take it. And God is saying, I keep giving you opportunities. And T.D. Jakes said, we pray prayers that God doesn't answer. And what I, he meant by that is, we ask God for a table. God gives us wood, and we stare at the wood, and we're like, God, I need a table. And God is saying, right there. I gave you everything you need to create, but you keep stepping over information. You keep stepping over videos that I'm saying, if you just listen to that, I would unlock your destiny. Come on. Come on. The more that you learn, the more room you give God to move. If you are in your two by four, God is saying, man, I'm going to. I'm going to really need to take you places to get you to step out because I only have three bricks to work on. But if you just started collecting bricks, you would start to realize that you have enough bricks to build a house. You know, enough bricks to build your destiny. But we keep waiting for God to present us a house when God keeps giving us opportunities to build one. I want you guys to learn to diversify yourself. Learn to find common ground with people. Be a sponge. Like soak things in. Read different books. I don't care if it's not it's not, it's not your interest. Begin to diversify yourself. Learn about different topics. Be a well-rounded human being. That investment will pay off more than anything you can do in your world. And stay forever a student. Commit your life to learning. Commit your life to learning from people, from relationships. Don't ever walk away from a situation not having learned something. Always promise yourself that anywhere that I go, whether it's a job, a, a class, a situation, a relationship, a friendship, I'm going to walk away a better person. If you're not, if you're going to love me, you're going to love me. If not, I'm going to learn from it. Come on. Yeah, that needs to be our mentality. And don't be just passionate. Be excellent. Be excellent in your passion, not just passionate. And I believe that will take you places. Number three, hustle. Um, Proverbs 14, 23, in all, thing, uh, in all toil there's profit. But in mere posts tends to only be poverty. That's not really what's written. But um, it says in all, in all toil there's profit. But in mere talk tends to to only be tense only to poverty um but i believe if we were to change it now it would be in all um in toil there's profit but in posts there tends to be poverty with hustle i believe that like i said social media can be such a powerful thing but you know the way that our mind works is if you tell it things long enough it starts to believe it's true and so as much as powerful i believe social media is the problem is we post enough. We talk enough hustle. And right now in our, in our generation, it's like can't stop, won't stop, hustle, the grind. You know, millionaire mentality, books, podcasts. You'll find a meme every single morning, 5 a.m. crew. Everything is on there. And it's so powerful to post. And I believe it is. I, I believe in motivation. I believe in inspiration. But it's not enough to post it. You actually have to do it. So we've created the foundation. We've poured in the content. We've got a working car. We've got gas. Now we need somewhere to go, and we need to be able to drive to get there, right? So I, this is just a secret tip I'm going to give you real quick. Your problem isn't demons. It's too much free time. Come on, yeah, right? And deliverance is often found in discipline. I can give you the secret. And I, I said often, so my pastors wouldn't kill me. I said often. Um, you'd be surprised how many demons you'll lose and how much freedom you'll gain if you just... Um, had a prayer life, healthy habits, and worked really, really hard. Come on, right? Come on, let's give that up. See, the problem is you're fighting pride, and the easiest way to, find, to kill pride is pride can't survive a 5 a.m. alarm clock. Try waking up at 5 a.m. All your pride is dead. All of it, it does not wake up. See, the problem is that we, we begin to see hustle everywhere. And I think that that's the incredible thing as looking to the generation before us. I think that's where the powerful thing to look back and to remember where God has taken us from. And I believe that's the power in looking back in generations and seeing how hard. When you see a generation, when you see your parents move from a country they don't know. And they move to a new country where they don't speak the language. And they begin to create jobs and businesses. And they begin to work day and night to support their seven kids guess what you're gonna do you're gonna work your bones dry because you're gonna know that I watched hustle growing up I watched hard work I watched them toil I watched them fight for a better life now I have to do that by example see the the definition of hustle and I think that not very many people know it is to obtain something by forceful action the next time you hashtag hustle forceful action when you work it's saying that you know what and I th and I think there's like um you know I, I do believe in balanced life but I think balance comes once you've achieved something right I think you fight for a balanced life once you've actually achieved something so once you've got 
the foundation you've invested then you take everything you know and you work day and night you work for the things you want but first you create dreams and I want to challenge you guys today I want you guys to begin to create and dream again I believe that as we grow up life begins to beat the crap out of us sometimes and it begins to question our worth and it begins to put fears in us and begin to watch people that don't succeed but there's so many success stories that that when you invest into yourself and you begin to hear and listen to motivation you begin to listen to people that made it through like dying times and people that made it through things that they couldn't have and God of the impossible and you begin to fill yourself with the word uh, you begin to create dreams in front of you that you begin to drive to you begin to create dreams that you know what I know I know that man I can't do financial aid but I think I can become a doctor and you begin to fight for that and you begin to go after it and you begin to you begin to go after every single opportunity and that's the thing is we have to become desperate for greatness I don't believe that greatness just happens if greatness just happened everybody would do it but it's so much easier just to wake up go to nine to five go home hang out with your friends but when you start to give your life purpose when you start to invest yourself to the point where you're like I've invested so much I've listened to so many podcasts and I've been filled you almost begin to it's like a buzz that gets into you you begin to become so eager to achieve something you begin to like you're like you know what I know college is going to come cost 40,000 so I'm going to work three jobs and I know that this is what it's going to cost and I know nobody in my family has been financially free but I have a dream to be financially free so I'm going to work until I bleed I'm going to blood sweat and tears and you're thinking man you're so intense that's so intense but here's the thing is greatness lives on the edge of losing it all God he set the perfect example when Jesus gave it all for us that's where greatness is if you want to know who the great I am is it's literally standing on a cross giving it all bleeding sweat and tears life leaving your body so the next time you're thinking man this is too hard I want you to picture that hard work is literally it's toil it's giving everything that you have it's it's literally feeling like I got nothing else to give and then it's getting back up and it's doing it again and it's thinking man I thought that was going to kill me but it didn't which means I probably got to get back up I got to try again that's what hustle means and I believe I truly believe that we cannot reflect the heart of God until we possess a work ethic that literally changes companies that begins to create companies that begins to change families they're saying I know my family is falling apart but I'm gonna work till I bleed I'm gonna work and I'm gonna be on my knees and I'm gonna hustle so freaking hard that they're gonna come to see Jesus come on come on come on I get a little excited um come on um your greatest victories I believe lie in the mornings and why to work on your dreams in the mornings this is gonna be a secret because your excuses and fears haven't even woken up when your dreams when your doubts and your fears sleep then sleep in beat them before they even know what's happening we have this five second rule and I I actually heard this and it's a scientific scientifically proven that there's a five second rule um that when you think something your body has five seconds to pull the e-brake your body is wired your brain is wired to protect you so when you like for example bungee jumping you're like I'm gonna do it and then if you don't decide to jump within five seconds your body pulls the e-brake and all of a sudden you, fear kicks in and that's where the magic happens in your morning that's where victory can happen in the morning is if you can beat the alarm clock if you can beat your body you can get your alarm rings and if you can get up within five seconds and I know that's gonna be hard but I want to challenge you guys the thing is if you start your day with victory guess what that does it starts a theme for you it's you start your day out of victory victory breeds victory productivity breeds productivity negativity breeds negativity failure breeds failure so if you can break the cycle the moment you wake up guess what victory lies in that come on and so and with that um so sometimes your dreams your dreams isn't what you thought what, sometimes your dream isn't what you thought it would be but your commitment to it will lead you to where you need to be and I want you guys I want to encourage you guys to continue to hustle even if it looks like man I'm not this isn't what I thought the road it's not about arrival it's about the journey you'd be surprised how many detours how many I thought I was gonna be here but when you get there you discover oh my gosh my heart actually beats stronger for this and you allow to trust God and you allow the, the habits that you build to begin to carry you through the road and where it leads you is so much greater than what you thought it would be and then four grace is not for the lazy I hear this all the time you know grace can take you places and grace is for the undeserving it is for the undeserving but it's not for those that are lazy I don't believe in that I believe grace is when you've done all that you can 
when your hands are bleeding and you're tired, when, you're, when you've been working and working and your bank account is dry, when you're sleep deprived, you've got nothing left, you've given your dream 110% and you're telling God, oh God, I can't give no more. And God is saying, your dream is going to require one more step. And you're like, God, I'm out of steps. I'm literally on the edge of a cliff, God. God, I can't do anymore. God, I'm tired. God, when? God, I've been working so hard, God. God, I can't see it anymore. And you're discouraged and you've done all that you can. And you're standing there and God is saying, jump. And you're saying, God, I can't. I can't see it. That's where grace steps in. Grace steps in when you've done all that you can. And God's saying, I've seen your past, but i also seen your faithfulness. And I know that when I pour into you, you are faithful to hold my content. You created these habits that I know when I pour in, you pour out. And I know that it's not what comes to you, but comes through you. So when you step out, guess what's going to happen? God, daughter, I'm going to teach you to soar. And I'm going to take you to places that you've never been. And I'm going to make an example out of you. And I'm going to bring you before kings because what? Because you were excellent in your work and you created a work ethic and you were able to carry. Come on, come on. Yeah. Because what grace gives, you have to learn to maintain. You have to be able to maintain what grace gives. Because grace can come, and if you're like a bucket with no substance, guess what that grace is doing? It's falling through, and it feels grace. It's like a shower on Sunday morning. You feel great, but it leaves just as fast as it comes. And I don't believe, and I understand some of you are thinking, you don't know what I've been through. And I know this seems a little harsh, but I don't care what your circumstances are. There's people that have gone through more than you that are able to achieve more than you. If you allow your circumstances to be the stopping block, they will be. If you allow the, your circumstances to light a fire under you that I won't go back, it will be. It'll be what accelerates your life. It'll be what I know what I've been through and I will not let it happen to my next generation. I will not let it to continue. Come on. And I want to end this message on... We talked about creating a foundation, investing into yourself, becoming a person of quality. We've talked about working hard. We've talked about grace stepping in. But I truly, truly, truly believe that greatness cannot be found without the great I am. I believe that that is the core. And that's who he is. And I don't believe you can find it without him. Success is not a place of arrival. It's a journey of a lifetime. And without God, you can't survive it. Ask if you've ever read a successful story or a success story, you know it's had a whole lot of more rock bottoms than it has of hilltops. Success will try you and test you. And I personally, I, my mentor says this, Mariana, and she says, I couldn't survive life without God, neither would I want to. And I believe that, that success, it'll hit you so many times to teach you before it holds you up. That if you do not have God by your side, you cannot maintain. You cannot withstand the storms of life. You cannot withstand what success, off, what you have to pay that price. You will not be able to pay it without God. You will not be able to pay it without him. Build your life on the rock of ages. And that is the greatest foundation. Your habits are awesome, but the greatest foundation is the rock of ages. Look to God for your strength. Find your wisdom in the creator of the universe if you want to create if you want to open businesses you can but model it from the creator of the universe model it from the one who breathes things into air if you want to invent things that don't exist model it from the God who did it who took it from the dust come on come on and I'm going to end it on two points since no matter the position the status or achievement that you gain you will only be able to stay there as long as God chooses to keep you there I don't care and that's where it comes becoming a person of substance is the life can hit you so hard sometimes that you think you're good and then you let go of God and all of a sudden you went from the, from the highest hill to the lowest valley. And you want to stay next to God because he literally holds your whole life. So it doesn't matter what you achieve, what you obtain, who you love. If God can't maintain, if God can't keep you there, you're not staying. And why go through all of it? And lose God in the process. Why can I gain the whole world and lose your soul? Begin on your knees. Be the hardest worker in the room. Invest in yourself. Stay humble and grateful. God is the God of impossible. I want to dare you tonight to dream. I want to dare you to find God. Find your, start the day on your knees and ask God, God, what can I accomplish? God, where do you want me? This world is searching. You know what I believe? I believe there needs to be more Christians that are millionaires because we need to show the world that we can invest back into the world. There needs to be more doctors that are Christian that can speak of healing. There needs to be more teachers that speak into children's life. There needs to be more people that dream. I need the church to begin to dream again because this world needs more Christians that are standing tall and reflecting the greatness of God. 
So I want you guys to stand with me today. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.